Hey guys, and welcome to an extensive guide for the double-bladed staff. This is a guide aimed towards people that wish to gank solo, and in my opinion, this is the best solo ganking build out there. The double-bladed staff offers a ton of mobility. It's the only weapon that has good dismount capability and also able to chase just about any build. Other weapons like Claws or One and Frost are great for dismounting, but once you need to chase your opponent, you'll fall behind quickly if the enemy is using an escape set. The build can dismount just about any of the standard mounts, so Swift Claws, Horses, Boars shouldn't be a problem. Dismounting Bears and Oxes though will be very difficult to do solo. Some of the lower tier Oxes are possible to dismount if you execute your combo perfectly. That being said, the Double Bladed is not a fighting weapon. If people actually choose to fight back instead of fleeing, it will be a difficult fight. Most of the time when you dismount someone, they will not try to fight back, since they are often carrying valuable items that they do not want to risk losing. Or they anticipate more gankers to show up, so fleeing is usually the natural response for people that you gank. The build I run is a variation from the build I used in my last Double Bladed video. Here's the build. Fiend Cal, to purge any buffs the enemies might have. You'll mostly be looking to purge sprint abilities like Wanderlust, but if your opponent chooses to fight back, you might want to purge other buffs like Cleric Robe, Mercenary Jacket, Scholar Robe, etc. Notable things that you cannot purge are Gigantify on Guardian Boots, Focused Run on Scholar Sandals, or Bloodlust on the One Hand Daggers E. Assassin Jacket, to go invisible as fast as you see an opponent enter your screen. This ability can also be used to juke and escape if you find yourself outnumbered or losing the fight. Demon Cape, for more damage and really useful for dismounting. It will drop a lava pool under your opponent while they are stunned and does a lot of damage. Hunter Shoes, for an insane speed boost and also longer CC duration on your stun run. Double Bladed Staff, the reason we're using the Double Bladed over any of the other quarter staffs is for the Crescent Slash ability, which is a long range jump that also slows your opponent and has a short cooldown. Poisons, to help dismount, it also reveals enemies if they try to use invisibility potions. Poisons do a lot more damage to mounts and is why it is favored by most gankers. Omelets for increased cooldown reduction. You aren't going to win the fights by damage. This build focuses on sustained damage and your ability to keep up with your opponent and CC them as often as possible. Earlier I have used a Mage Cowl, which is a decent alternative, although if your opponent has a strong sprint ability like Demon Boots or Soldier Boots Wanderlust, you'll almost have no chance to catch them. Therefore, Fiend Cowl is the better option. Undead Cape is also a variation that I used before, but seeing as it got nerfed to only activating under 15% HP, it is a lot weaker than what it once was, so Demon Cape is a more aggressive option that I strongly prefer. I would recommend getting decent spec in this build before starting to solo PvP. Seeing as you will most likely get out DPS by nearly any other build you'll try ganking, your spec and tier of gear is quite important with this build. You can start out with this build with low spec, but be prepared to let a lot of people go, as you will not be able to fight high tier DPS players. I would recommend trying to get 50 spec in all your equipment and weapon, and using at least 6-1 gear. Fame farming with this build is a bit tricky. It's not a super efficient fame farm kit, but if you swap out the assassin jacket for a spectre jacket, you can clear just about any solo dungeon with any build quite efficiently. Here's the build I would recommend for that. Fiend Cowl with Energy Regain and Aggression passive, Spectre Jacket with Self Ignition and Balanced Mind passive, Hunter Shoes with Refreshing Sprint and Balanced Mind passive, Demon Cape or Thetford Cape, Poison Potions for bosses, and Health Regen food. On the Double Bladed Staff, you'll want to choose Concussive Blow on your Q, Empowered Slam on your W, Crescent Slash on your E, and Life Leech on the passive. There are some tips I would like to share. If your opponents are using Fort Sterling Capes, it counters your combo. You'll still want to go for the combo as usual, but be prepared to quickly follow up with an E and a Q to get the dismount on them that way. If there are multiple enemies passing by, consider letting them go, as fighting 1vx is not what this build is meant for. You can make it work here and there, but that will most often be because your opponents are scared and or disorganized. So if you're just starting off, try looking for the 1v1s. When looking for a spot to gank, you'll want to always start off dismounted. Despawn your mount, as this will give away your position if you go invisible and the mount remains next to you. 
If possible, try to look for an angle where your name tag shows up where the enemy's map overlay is. This is a cheeky little trick that will make your name a little more difficult for your opponent to spot, giving you a little more time to activate your invisibility and get into position. When you spot a name on the edge of your screen, you'll want to go invisible as fast as possible. Start moving into position for where your opponent will pass by. Once he is within a couple of meters from you, break stealth by activating your stun run followed by attacking him. He will be stunned in your demon cape puddle and you follow this up by immediately using a Q and a poison. This should be enough to dismount any of the standard mounts as long as they don't have a Fort Sterling cape. If they do have a Fort Sterling cape you'll have to follow up your combo with the crescent slash, jumping onto them and going for another Q. Once they are dismounted, start damaging them with auto attacks and Qs. If they get out of range, use your stun run, sprint, or E, whichever is off cooldown. Be smart with your cooldowns and don't use them all at once. A big part of this build is using your cooldowns efficiently. And using everything at once will allow your opponents to get away or drain your energy to the point where you can't chase them any longer. Your Q ability also has a passive ability where it will stun for every third Q used. Try to use this effectively. If you see that you have two Q stacks while running towards your opponent ready to stun run him, Use a couple of auto attacks before activating your third Q. Doing it this way, you can stun your opponent for much longer since the stuns do not stack. If the fight is too difficult or the opponent's too many, you should look for an opportunity to disengage. A common mistake is to spam whatever mobility ability you have as fast as it's available. Try waiting until you have all of your abilities ready, and then using them all at once. So you'll sprint and stun run for even more movement speed. And at the end of your sprint, you'll also jump away. This should in most cases give you enough room to manage to mount up and get away. If you have your invisibility off cooldown, activate that. Wait a few seconds to see where your opponents anticipate you going, and then sprint and jump the opposite direction for the highest chance of gaining enough space to mount up. That's all I got for you this time, I hope to see a lot more double bladed users in the near future. Please enjoy some more clips showing this build in action. I hope this guide helped you out, and if it did, please consider liking and subscribing. Until next time, have a good one. Without you I'm drifting